What is up my Andronauts? When I mention arginine, you might immediately think about a blood flow supplement, something that helps to give you a better pump in the gym. But apart from that, I want to talk about its effects on testosterone, growth hormone IGF-1, erectile function, and the things you can stack with arginine to make it better. And then also some other interesting benefits of arginine that you might not have known about. So let's dive in. To supplement or not to supplement. In healthy adults, the levels of endogenous arginine synthesis, so this is the, the arginine that's created in the body, is not essential because your body can create it, is sufficiently great that arginine is not an essential amino acid, but catabolic stress, as well as dysfunction of the kidneys or small intestine, can lead to low levels of arginine, a condition where levels of endogenous arginine may not suffice to meet metabolic demands. And this can lead to side effects. And I want to talk about that later on in this video. So when you eat a high protein diet, you're going to get amino acid that can create arginine and you're also eating arginine from the protein. So arginine, you don't have to supplement it because if you eat a high protein diet, you're already getting enough of it. Unless you have kidney issues and small intestine issues, then the body, or at least hyperstimulation of the immune system, then the body can deplete your arginine and then it could be helpful to supplement arginine. All right, the big problem with arginine is that it has very low bioavailability. So arginine bioavailability is roughly about 20% for a 10 gram dose. It's not very high. This is the absorption from the gut into the body. And then once it's been absorbed from the gut, it goes to the liver. And then it goes, it undergoes first pass processing metabolism. So approximately 40%, if not more, of the oral arginine is metabolized by arginase in the first pass in the liver. And a further 15% of systemic arginine is abstracted and metabolized by the liver. So absorption is very low. And then also it's being heavily metabolized in the liver. So the total amount of arginine that you're actually going to get from supplementation is quite low. And so this is why people actually prefer to use citrulline because it's actually better at increasing arginine levels than arginine itself. And this is arginine metabolism. You might think about arginine only increasing nitric oxide, but it does a whole host of other things as well. So arginine, for example, is responsible for creating nitric oxide. It also creates citrulline, and it's involved in synthesis of creatine. It's involved in synthesis of augmatine, one of my favorite compounds. Check my channel for augmatine. Then it's also responsible for creating ornithine. Ornithine is great for lowering cortisol, making you feel good, helping with protein synthesis, which is then also converted to polyamines, which has its own benefits. And then it creates glutamate and glutamine. It converts to hydroxyproline, which is helpful for joint health and so on. So as you can see, and it's also involved in the urea cycle to detox ammonia. So it's so many benefits to arginine than just increasing nitric oxide. And so I just want to bring that kind of awareness. So beyond nitric oxide, arginine metabolism is at the crossroads of many important metabolic pathways, including those related to urea, creatine, polyamines, proline, glutamate, Ocmatine, methylated derivatives, and homoarginine. So this is in terms of testosterone. And this is in mice, where they treated these mice, heat, they heat treated these mice. So mice were heat stressed at 40 degrees for 30 minutes every day for 50 days. This is HD. And then they were also given arginine at a dose of two milligram per kilogram. So this is HD plus arginine. And these results demonstrated that arginine can alleviate testosterone reduction in heat-treated mice by upregulating allied secretion, enhancing the antioxidant system, and increasing the expression of testosterone synthesis-related genes. So this is the control, heat stress drop testosterone, adding in arginine prevented the drop. And you can see that significant increased allage, which is quite interesting to me. It would have been interesting if they just used arginine in these mice without the heat stress to see if it would increase allage in normal animals as well. And this was desterogenic enzymes. You have SDAR, you have this SF, which is a steroid factor one. You have the HBA, the three beta hydroxysteroid dehydrogenase. You have the 17 beta hydroxysteroid dehydrogenase. This one converts androstenedione dione into testosterone, so it activates testosterone. And then you have the CYP17A1. That was also massively increased. You can see that the steroid factor one massively increased, SDAR massively increased. This is the red limited enzyme that transport cholesterol from the outside to the inside of the mitochondria. It helps to prevent the decrease in this 3 beta HSD enzyme. It massively increases androstenedione to testosterone conversion. 
and it massively increased the CYP17A1 enzyme as well. So it seems to, at least in heat stress animals, to massively upregulate some of these sterogenic enzymes which then helps to prevent the decrease in testosterone which is interesting because like it massively increased LH it massively increased some of these sterogenic enzymes but then testosterone was only normalized it wasn't going over the control level then we have testosterone levels in humans they used 30 male endurance strength athletes they used a high dose of 5.7 grams of arginine with 8.7 grams of aspartate, which can then also stimulate LH release. Then they had a low dose of about 3 grams of arginine with about 2 grams of aspartate. So we can see cortisol before and after, testosterone before and after. So let's focus on testosterone. We have the placebo group testosterone went from 38 to 38, I'm saying the same. In the low dose, it went from 46 to 43, it dropped a little bit. And then in the high dose, it went from 37 to 39. Uh, p mole per liter so it did increase a little bit which is about like 50 nanogram per deciliter but given that the low dose decreased the high dose increased the placebo remained the same we need more studies to show if it actually does anything right i don't think it's actually going to do anything the point is that even if you use almost close to six grams of arginine it doesn't really seem to affect testosterone at least in these guys that was endurance strength athletes cortisol dropped by about 16 points versus it increased in the placebo group by about eight points or something like that. So it increased in the placebo group, decreased in the high dose group, but it, and it also decreased quite massively here in the low dose group. So it does seem to lower cortisol, maybe slightly increase testosterone in humans. I don't think it's all that of significant. Arginine depletion on testosterone. This was an animal study. So what better way to test the effects of arginine on testosterone than completely eliminating it from the diet? So they had this animal diet just completely removed arginine from the diet. Arginine depletion doesn't lower testosterone, but it did reduce the anabolic actions of androgens. So when you want to respond to androgens, supplementing arginine can actually help you to respond again to get rid of that androgen resistance that you have. So you can see that's not a really big difference. It decreased a little bit, but again, like these guys were severely de deficient in arginine, right? They still had like normal levels of testosterone. So as a wrap, when it comes to testosterone, it might increase testosterone in animals, depletion doesn't lower testosterone, and it's very unlikely to increase testosterone in humans when you're healthy. Maybe when you're unhealthy and you're highly stressed, it might be beneficial. In terms of growth hormone, 6 grams of arginine doesn't seem to affect growth hormone or IGF-1. You can see insulin remained more or less the same, growth hormone remained more or less the same, cortisol remained the same, IGF-1 remained the same. Arginine doesn't seem to be effective for altering your growth hormone IGF-1. Growth hormone blunts the growth hormone release during exercise. The dose that they used was 0 0.075 grams per kilogram. So if you're 100 kilograms, that would be like 7.5 grams of arginine. Growth hormone was lower in the arginine group. And you can see it wasn't like a big decrease, but it blunted the growth hormone increase from exercise a little bit. In terms of ED... It has been reported that arginine, when given below daily doses of 3 grams per day, is ineffective for general therapeutic implications. And specifically for ED, 1.5 grams has been shown to be completely ineffective. So if you're going to use 3 grams or less, it's probably not going to help with bonies at all. Now, this is how we can make it better. You combine it with different things. So arginine plus pycnogenol. You might have heard about citrulline plus pycnogenol, but arginine and pycnogenol also works quite well. So arginine, 3 grams per day, plus 80 milligrams of pycnogenol for one month. This is what they used. 73% reported erections are easier to initiate, and 70% reported erections are easier to sustain. This is just the amount of people. This is not the percentage of improvement, right? So and not even 100% of people reported improvements. How big those improvements are, they did not even specify. Again, they used arginine 3 grams for one month, followed by arginine plus pycnogenol, 80 milligrams for one year. Significant improvements in restoration of normal erectile function at 80% of the subjects. Arginine plus pycnogenol doubled intercourse frequency in that study. And then this was an interesting study because you can see the difference between arginine alone plus then pycnogenol. 3 grams of arginine aspartate daily for one month normalized erections in only 5% of the patients. The addition of 80 milligrams of pine bark extract, which contains pycnogenol per day, to the arginine treatment for one month resulted 
in an 80% success rate, which increased to 92% with a treatment of 120 milligrams of pine bark extract per day for one month more. So the bigger the dose that you add of the pine bark extract to your arginine, the more likely it's going to work. And then as you can see, this was the improvement. So they have this IIEF score that rates you up to 30. And these guys were 15, which means they have moderate erectile dysfunction, which then increased almost to 30 with the arginine pycnogenal use. So it's like almost completely restored proper erectile function with that mix, which is pretty sweet. And then they also looked at the arginine pycnogenal combination on testosterone. They did a crossover study where they, this was the placebo, and then they used the supplement. This was the supplement and then the placebo group. So you can see there was an increase in testosterone from the combination of arginine and pycnogenol on testosterone. It's about 115 to 120 nanogram, nanogram per deciliter increase in testosterone, which is actually quite significant. It's quite good compared to other natural testosterone boosters like Tonkatelli and so on. Then we have arginine plus Cialis. They used 2.5 grams of arginine and 5 milligrams of Cialis on the erectile score arginine they increased a little bit not that good cialis increases from 15 to 21 see the scores from 25 so that's quite a good improvement and then the combination increases from 15 to 22 so it was a slight better when you combined both of them together and then they have cialis plus arginine for erections on people with diabetes they had a hba1 score of over eight percent they used five grams of arginine and 10 milligrams of cialis and then also both you can see that the combination of both was significantly better for enhancing erectile function than either one of these alone. And then also the same study that also looked at testosterone, the combination increased testosterone the most. Cialis was quite effective in increasing testosterone, like doubling it, but the combination was significantly better for increasing testosterone. And this was the combination of 5 milligrams of arginine plus 10 milligrams of Cialis. It's a, it didn't like increase your testosterone to like close to a thousand. This was just like close to uh, just over 600, which is still pretty good. Then they also looked at arginine and Cialis increased testosterone in elderly men. Um, they used five grams of arginine and 10 milligrams of Cialis. It again, increases testosterone to 22 nanomol per liter, which is very much in line here with the 10 milligrams of Cialis, which is good because five milligrams of Cialis the less you use, the less likely you are to get side effects. So if you combine five milligrams of Cialis with five grams of arginine, you can potentially increase your, double your testosterone from 330 to 660, which is actually quite good in these elderly men, just from these two supplements. So arginine has also been shown to increase dopamine. The contents of dopamine in the stratial extracellular fluid increased by seven to 15 fold in the presence of arginine. Seems to be quite a dopaminergic. So there you have it. It does not seem to be very good at improving erections or testosterone on its own, but when you combine it with pycnogenol or specifically Cialis, you can expect a much bigger improvement in erectile function and testosterone. Right? Apart from that, arginine is also really good when you have overactivation of the immune system. So when you have this low-grade inflammation, it can lead to low levels of arginine, which can then contribute to even more inflammation, specifically inflammation in the gut, contributing to leaky gut, which then also contributes to lower levels of testosterone because you have more inflammation. So when you supplement arginine, this can cool the inflammation in the gut. It brings down inflammation, improves gut health because you supply that arginine that is being depleted by the inflammation. If you have low level of inflammation, you have gut issues specifically, try supplementing some arginine, maybe with some pycnogenol, and then see how your testosterone erections and everything improves. All right, guys, I hope this was helpful. If you would like to maximize your testosterone, I have an ebook on that. Link is in the description below, so be sure to download that. And thanks for watching. I'll check you in the next one. Cheers, guys. <laughs>